Hey, if you're a real rock nice listener, you actually know the name Keith Wallen very, very well. Now, he's got a whole long, long list of accolades, and we've enjoyed his talent for years, man. Well, get ready, because uh, he's doing a solo thing, man. Now, uh, Monkey Boy played his song Dream Away last week on the show, and uh, I was, I can say beyond surprised at the demands not not requests i got to have keith on the show but the demands i got to have him on right away because we never wow. do this after we play new music like that wow. keith, people love you dude first That's i want to give listeners the idea of who <clears throat> keith wallen is okay shady spring west virginia would you say small town boy does good i mean i i guess uh yeah, it's uh, it's a long way from West Virginia for sure. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, Shady Spring, pretty small town. Um, really, it's kind of just a, I guess you'd call it a suburb of of Beckley, which is probably uh, the more well known um, kind of town that's close by. But uh, yeah, um, grew up there. Um, my mom still lives there. Um, yeah, some good, met some good friends growing up. And uh, I guess when I was, uh, I was 17, I decided to leave to uh, move to Tennessee because I, I, I knew I wanted to go to college at um, University of Tennessee. Okay. And my, my older brother at the time lived in Knoxville and, uh, or one of my older brothers. And uh, he said, you know, Hey man, why don't you just, you can move down here and, and get a year residency and, and, you know, hopefully try and get in-state tuition because, you know, any way to kind of make yeah. that whole process a little easier on the wallet. Help a little uh, bit. Exactly. Yeah. It, so, so I did that and um, was able to get in and, and everything worked out. And, um, you know, a lot of people were like, well, what about, you know, what about your senior year of high school? You know, isn't that going to be, you know, hard? And I was just like, no, nah. because, <laughs> You know, I, I think I kind of realized uh, early on that in the main scope of your life, high school at the time seems important, but it really, it really doesn't matter that much, you know, I think. But yeah. uh, obviously, you know, there was some friends I was leaving behind that I that I that I love and, and missed at the time. But, you know, almost every other week I'd come back or they'd come visit and, you know, we'd still hang out and stuff. So so it was cool. It was a little bit of a sacrifice, but not not really too much of one, in my opinion. That's uh, just getting out and doing your own thing, man. You got you got to do that sometimes. Totally. And and uh, yeah, you can. I've I've found over time, man, you can keep in touch with the people that mean the most, the friends that mean the most. You're yeah. not gonna lose touch with them. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's kind of awesome. The Adley's Way, Breaking Benjamin, uh, people pretty much know that stuff. You can on our flagship station. You can even still hear Copper once in a while. Wow. Uh, here is your chance to do a little humble bragging. Oh, Let no. people. I hate that. <laughs> You're like, no, no, I don't want to tell people I'm good. No. Uh, <laughs> Let people know just some of the other things that they hear your work in, man. Uh, <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> uh, well, if you're serious, we'll we'll yeah, skip it. No, no. I mean, I, I. You know, look, the whole, the whole, uh, you know, why aren't, why aren't you proud of what you've done? It's not that I'm not proud. I guess I just, um, makes me feel uncomfortable just because, uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm naturally an introvert and it takes every bit of myself to like talk about myself and, and do these kind of things. But you know, uh, it, you got to do them. And, and by the way, thank you so much for having me. I oh, don't thank you very much for being here. <laughs> I'm like, once, I hate this. Once again, we're talking to Keith Wallen, <laughs> uh, uh, humble introvert. <laughs> what, Pretty okay, much, yeah. How, how does an introvert become a rock star? How did that happen? <sighs> again, it's like, I, I, I don't even like being called that. Um, you know, it's one of those things that I just, I love, I love writing music. I love the feeling of performing music. Um, I love that, that, you know, people come to shows and you can see, you can see it on their face that they're, they're just enjoying it and having a great time. And um, okay. so I love that. I love that exchange and just, 
you know, the energy of it. Um, and it's just, it's something I've always wanted to do. My, my dad was, was a singer way back in the day and uh, he'd always be kind of playing, you know, old school records, uh, just kind of like the, you know, Frank Sinatra kind of stuff. And uh, so I, I, I always just kind of, you know, slowly got into music that way. And one of my friends growing up, he, he had a guitar and I'd go over and hang out with him. And, you know, we eventually I got a guitar, too, because I'd go over there and I'd be like, man, I need to get a guitar so we can just like hang out more. Um, so and, you know, he showed me a couple stuff and we eventually started a band. And um, yeah, he actually was in, in copper for a while. Okay. But uh, so I just knew that it was something that I wanted to do. I just felt like there was there was no uh, better feeling than just sitting there with an an instrument and you know learning how to play a Metallica song or something. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And <laughs> you know, never in my wildest dreams would I thought to myself that you know I would be doing something like this for a living. Um, I always wanted to you know I, I think there was a there was a definite point in time where um you know after after you know jamming in garages and and what have you and you know plucking around on guitar for a while where I was just like you know maybe I could really try and do this and and you know I could always kind of sing a little bit you know I wasn't that great you know I I guess I got that from my father um, okay. and my mom well she was in that kind of entertainment business as well um, so it was, it was kind of one of those things where, you know, maybe, maybe there's something in there that, uh, I can draw from, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I definitely hit a point where I really was like, maybe I can try and do this. Obviously the, the, the cards are stacked against you. Uh, just a, a, a young kid from West Virginia trying to make it in the music biz. It's, uh, I'm, there's so many people from all walks of life, all countries, all areas that, would love to do the same thing. So I knew that it would be a, a hard thing to accomplish and uh, would take a lot of work. Um, but uh, I kept at it, you know, um, you know, even, you know, after moving to Tennessee, you know, I, I eventually started uh, my first band copper. And, you know, I remember we played in, in, a, in a University of Tennessee battle of the bands uh, this was in, in 2000, 2001. <laughs> Okay. Um, was it was and, it like a radio station contest or something or yeah there was a radio station there was a music store that was that was involved so it's like you know the the, the first place winner would win win some gear from the music uh store and and you know you you, you would get like free studio time at a local studio so okay we were just like oh man let's 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 try to do this and and somehow we ended up winning and and it was awesome. I was like, man, it's like, Hey, we, we got a little something here and let's just, uh, let's just keep going. But it's so funny now looking back and listening back to, you know, uh, the first things we recorded. <laughs> Do you stuff cringe and, a little bit? Oh, I cringe <laughs> hard. Oh, I'm just like, God, I'm, I'm terrible. What was I doing? <laughs> and like, why did people like this at all? But, uh, you know, got to just try and work and get better. So I've tried to just keep at it and keep working and uh, hopefully I'm a little bit better today. So just to hear that, that's, that's kind of funny because everything is for, uh, forward progression. You know, you, you just keep on like keeping on, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when, when you, you go back and listen, uh, it's sometimes kind of like, eh, well, I don't know. Oh. Absolutely. At the, at the time you're, you're like, man, we're awesome. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, and then 20 years later, you're like, don't ever let anyone hear that ever. Well, and, and early on like that, uh, did you have like the eight or 10 friends that were the hangers on, like telling you how, how awesome you were <laughs> and pumping you up? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, we definitely had our, 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 our homies that, uh, would hang out and, and come to shows and 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 it's funny some of them <laughs> we have uh, one friend that he kept on getting kicked out of our shows <laughs> and and then he would somehow just walk around the back of the venue and sneak back in <laughs> we we're just like we we're like yeah man way to way to work it <laughs> kind of become uh, a thing with him <laughs> uh, yeah get yeah. kicked out and come back yeah it was it was awesome Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, your tune "Dream Away." Now, uh, sure. the that rhythm, rhythmic syn 
Jeez, good morning, man. Uh, can you tell I have a migraine? Uh, the rhythmic synth at the beginning, uh -huh. that's something that I really haven't heard a lot lately and how it kind of builds. Was that an idea in your head before you even started writing the song? That was not. That was uh, my, uh, my producer's idea, uh, Joe Rickard. Yeah, he, uh, he kind of had that um, little piece of, of music kind of going. And I was like, man, that's awesome. And I, I love, um, I've always loved just that whole just 80s synth pop kind of new wave, you know, mm -hmm. um, moment in time. So, uh, you know, even even with the Stranger Things, you know, they're, the theme song, the, it, yeah. it's so cool sounding, you know. But I, you know, I really, re I don't think we really went into it um, trying to do that. It was kind of one of those things, man, um, you know, we, we've got all these songs recorded and we needed one more. So, you know, Dream Away, it was the last one we wrote. And um, so, you know, it was kind of stressful in a way. But, uh, you know, we had a couple of other ideas that almost got recorded and they ended up not being just because we, we just decided, you know, let's scrap these. And I feel like it's like we, we can get better. We, we get we get sure that we can get better than these couple ideas. And um, he kind of whipped up something real quick on the computer just kind of to, to spark any kind of inspiration. And instantly, you know, we started messing with it. I was like, man, I really like that. And, uh, you know, I heard a melody over it right away. And then we came up with, you know, uh, you know, the chorus idea, the music and the, the melody over that. I had a, I had a, I had the lyric dream away. Um, okay. And then just, just wrote it from there. And we wrote the whole song in probably two hours. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So it was super cool. And it was my favorite one. It was my favorite one from the whole recording process so uh, i love when that happens you know you sometimes you sit there and rack your brain and you're like ah oh, i got nothing but sometimes uh you know sometimes it just happens and you're just well, like oh let's hold on to that hold on to that so it's cool okay that brings up a question that uh you being a, a songwriter and musician do you find that uh, uh those songs that you work so hard on and keep layering stuff over and making changes to and that stuff come out a little bit less perfect than those songs that just kind of click right away. I wouldn't say that. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, you know, I, I think that sometimes it's a, it's, it's, it's a problem where it's taken a while because you want it to be, you want it to be as good as it can. Okay. And it just means that you're not settling on the first idea that comes out of your brain. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. I just try to try to be um, proactive with it and not just be like, yeah, that's probably it. You know, I, I really digest it and go back and, you know, maybe even wait a day, come back, listen to something on fresh ears. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, either, either way, you know, you could, you could end up with something that's pretty good by the, by the time it's at its finished point. Um, you know, obviously it's a lot easier if it just comes to you, but, uh, <laughs> does it, doesn't mean that the, uh, there could be any drop in quality in my opinion. Okay. At least I hope not. All right. Uh, where I have an idea, but, uh, uh, you're a pretty busy guy. So, how did you find time to create all this m new material? Well, it's, uh, it's funny, it, you know, obviously I've got, um, the band going, um, you know, before the pandemic, there were, um, kind of little sections of time in between tours. And I would really try and take advantage of that and really just work on my solo stuff. Uh, and you know, over the past couple of years, I've, I've released a couple songs, um, and, uh, that, you know, and done some videos and stuff and has basically been in those gaps. So okay. we had one, we had one big gap, uh, before our, uh, first tour of the year last year. And I had a bunch of songs, uh, that I felt good about. I still wasn't, um, sure of the final, uh, the final, you know, uh, I guess selections still had some writing to do. Uh, so, Joe came out to Tennessee 
and we were like, all right, first couple days, let's, let's decide on what songs we're going to record. And, you know, we were missing a bunch. Uh, there was, there was probably maybe five that, you know, we, uh, maybe, maybe more than that, maybe five, six, uh, ones that we felt good about. And, you know, we needed four more songs just to kind of come out of the ether yeah, some, yeah, somehow. Okay. Um, and so we just worked, we worked on that. We worked on, on getting at least some, some, some foundations, you know, there, there was, uh, there was a couple of times where we would record a little bit of music and, you know, while he was kind of editing some, some things and, and putting some kind of sprinkles on it, I guess, to kind of okay. make it sound cooler. Uh, I'd go upstairs, I'd write lyrics to the music, you know, so we were kind of really trying to get it, get it done. Almost uh, double dipping. So for like, really because I mean, you're it, talking about like when he's waiting for stuff to render you're actually like going in and uh, writing parts for for songs yeah absolutely because i you know we had we had two weeks basically so we recorded we recorded the whole album in two weeks um you know because i had a tour coming up you know I, yeah. I knew i wouldn't have any time to really sit down and focus you know out there sometimes i can i can do it you know on some days off but uh, it's tough. It's just, you're in a new environment. It's everything's distracting. So, yep. but, um, but yeah, we were able to do it before our tour. And then, um, Aaron was, uh, gracious enough to lend his bass playing talent and, and, uh, expertise to the album. And while we were on tour, I, I brought my mobile setup and laptop and, and, um, tracked his, his bass parts and, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how that oh, went down. That worked out well. Yeah. Uh, cool. Now, uh, spring twenty twenty one is what everything is saying about when the album comes out. Have you nailed down a date, or you're still sticking with just spring? Yeah, I think it's easier just to say spring. I think the situation is is uh, with all things right now is fluid. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I, I think ideally um, I would want it to come out in the spring. Um, you know, we'll just see. We'll just see how everything lines up. But uh, I've had the songs a long time, um, and they've been done a long time. Uh, really just, you know, like I said, recorded it before the pandemic. But when, when we kind of started getting in the process of mixing and mastering and, and uh, you know, 2020 was kind of going through uh, – you know, it's, it's, it's thing. I just, I just was like, I don't want to release it in 2020. I just, there's too much, <laughs> there's too much bad mojo. Uh, let's just wait and, and get a, you know, a clean slate for 2021. So. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping, man, you know, the zoom Skype uh, stuff like that. I think there's even a couple others that I have on here that uh, they're okay for this stuff for a while. But it's getting really old, man. I want, I want to hang out I with know. you. I, want to, like, I know. actually sit and talk in person and have a drink or something. This is, oh, exactly. Yeah, just are you know grilling out, barbecuing, anything. Yeah. I miss I miss all my friends. I mean my my family. I haven't seen my my friends and family in like a year and a half or something crazy, you know. And it's it's killing me. Damn. But uh, you know we gotta we gotta be safe and and uh, you know try to wait this thing out you know wait it out persevere man uh website keithwallen.com and you are all over the social networks right so you've I got am. you've got everything covered i i saw uh twitter um facebook uh, are you on instagram i am okay all right so everything i mean you people just go and Google Keith Wallen and like all this stuff will come up. You can send me, you can watch videos from like 2002. I think you have stuff out there. It's, I, yeah, you're that take, like, and get that taken down actually. <laughs> no, 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 I'm like, no, I'm, no, I'm better than that. I'm better. No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm super, I'm super proud of, of, of where I came from and the guys I played with and I wouldn't change any of it. It was, it was such great times uh, to, you know, playing in, in copper and Adelie's way and everything else. So uh, I joke around, but really I'm, I'm, I'm very, very appreciative of all of it. 
Well, I, I thank you for your talent, sir. I thank you for being here today. I really, thank you. really appreciate it. I'm sure the Real Rock Knights listeners really, <laughs> really appreciate it. And please stop emailing me. Stop. Dude, I got threatened by one guy. What? <laughs> I got threatened by one guy. He's like, uh, after after uh, uh, our we, our new music segment uh, is uh, done by this guy. <sighs> This DJ out of Iowa that wants to be called Monkey Boy for some reason. But anyway, he played your song Dream Away. Okay. And uh, <laughs> this guy is like, if you don't have Keith Wallen on next week, I will kill you. Good Lord. <laughs> so, I was like, uh, uh, Lauren? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, I think it was pretty much tongue in cheek, but. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, well, um, thank you. Thank you for, uh, weathering through all that. Um, look, I'm, I'm, I'm super appreciative. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, thanks for, for giving my song some love and, um, you know, all the fans that have been reaching out. I'm, I'm appreciative too. I'm sorry to you for that, but, hey. um, uh, uh, yeah. So thank you so much. And no problem. What do you say would give people a little taste of dream away? Absolutely. Okay. This is Keith Wallen, the man, the myth, the legend, and uh, the humble introvert. <laughs> and dream away on Real Rock Nights. <laughs>